after four decades of sifting through the fallout, both literal and metaphorical, of Chernobyl, I still find myself haunted by the lesser-known details. The roar of the explosion, for most, is the horrifying bookend to the disaster. But the truth, as it often does, lurks in the shadows cast by that deafening blast. Take the liquidators, for instance. These men and women, some drafted, some volunteers driven by a misplaced sense of duty, were thrown into the maw of the beast. We all know about the hastily built sarcophagus, a testament to human ingenuity under duress. But what most forget is that these liquidators, clad in ill-fitting gear with laughably short work shifts to minimize radiation exposure, were essentially building a tomb for a raging fire. They shoveled burning radioactive debris from the roof, their time measured not in hours, but in Röntgens, the invisible, insidious unit of radiation poisoning. Many succumbed to acute radiation sickness, ARS, within weeks, their bodies betraying them with agonizing burns and a horrific breakdown from the inside out. Then there's the red forest, a chilling misnomer. Lush pines once stood where the forest earned its dreadful name. The initial blast, a monstrous fireball, breathed fire upon the trees, turning their needles a rusty red before they died. But the horror didn't end there. Radioactive dust, clinging to the stricken pines, became a deadly souvenir. So radioactive were these trees that they were bulldozed and buried in mass graves, a silent testament to the destructive power unleashed. The human cost, of course, is the most profound. We speak of the immediate casualties, the firefighters who bravely rushed into the inferno, blissfully unaware of the invisible enemy they faced. But the long shadow of Chernobyl stretches far and wide. There are the children, born years later with birth defects, a grotesque lottery where the prize is a life forever marked by the sins of the past. There are the villages, seemingly untouched, yet forever abandoned, their silence a constant scream. Chernobyl wasn't just a nuclear explosion. It was a slow-motion nightmare that continues to unfold. And as I delve deeper, the horrific reality becomes more nuanced, more terrifying. It's a story not just of a single disaster, but of a poisoned legacy that will echo through the ages. Even the heroism at Chernobyl crawled with a strange darkness. We rightly laud the selfless acts of the firefighters, the first on the scene, battling a blaze they didn't understand. But what about the helicopter pilots? Tasked with dousing the burning reactor core with a lead and boron slurry, they flew a deadly ballet mere meters above the inferno. The lead, intended to absorb radiation, offered scant protection to the pilots themselves. Their cockpits, bathed in a sickly green glow from the radioactive core, became death traps. Several flights later, the effects began to show. Acute radiation sickness ravaged their bodies, and within weeks, many succumbed. Then there's the unsettling truth about the ghost town of Pripyat. Evacuated hastily, the city stands frozen in time, a monument to human abandonment. Dolls lie scattered in playgrounds, amusement park rides hang eerily still, and unfinished apartments hold the echoes of lives abruptly cut short. But Pripyat wasn't entirely deserted. A small population, defying evacuation orders, chose to remain amidst the ruins. These self-styled Samosli, as they're called, live a precarious existence, farming irradiated vegetables and tending to stray dogs, all the while haunted by the invisible ghost of radiation. The legacy of Chernobyl extends far beyond the immediate exclusion zone. Radioactive clouds drifted across Europe, 
contaminating crops and raising concerns about food safety for years to come. Wild boars, surprisingly resilient to radiation, became radioactive themselves, posing a unique challenge for hunters and consumers alike. The disaster forced a re-evaluation of nuclear safety protocols worldwide, a ripple effect that continues to be felt in every new reactor built. For all my years of research, Chernobyl remains an enigma. The scientific data is staggering, the human cost heartbreaking, but it's the lesser known stories, the quiet tragedies and unsettling details that truly paint a picture of the horror that unfolded. Chernobyl wasn't just a disaster, it was a stark reminder of the destructive power we wield, a power that continues to cast a long shadow over our future. The Soviets, in their usual veil of secrecy, downplayed the true dangers in the early days. This misinformation had its own brand of horror. Imagine a wedding party continuing just kilometers from the burning reactor, oblivious to the radioactive cloud drifting overhead. Think of children playing outside, their parents completely unaware of the invisible poison clinging to their clothes. The delayed evacuation of Pripyat, a full 36 hours after the explosion, condemned countless residents to unnecessary exposure. The disaster also birthed a macabre industry, black market tourism. Years after the incident, thrill seekers began filtering into the exclusion zone, drawn by a morbid curiosity. These visits, often poorly regulated, exposed them to dangerous levels of radiation for a fleeting glimpse of a ghost town. Some even stole artifacts from the abandoned buildings, unknowingly bringing radioactive souvenirs home. The natural world around Chernobyl has become an unexpected battleground. While some animal populations understandably declined, others thrived in the eerie absence of humans. Radioactive wolves now roam the exclusion zone, their long-term health a mystery. Radio-resistant fungi have been discovered, clinging to the walls of the destroyed reactor, a testament to life's tenacity in the face of unimaginable peril. Scientists are now studying these mutations, hoping to unlock secrets about adaptation and survival in extreme environments. Chernobyl's story is far from over. The decommissioning of the remaining reactors at the power plant is a monumental task, a decades-long project with its own set of challenges. The new sarcophagus, a marvel of engineering, is only a temporary solution. The true tomb, a deep geological repository, is still years away from completion. The exclusion zone itself though slowly being reclaimed by nature, will remain uninhabitable for centuries. As a historian, I'm compelled to learn from the past. Chernobyl serves as a stark reminder of the importance of transparency, the need for robust safety protocols, and the profound respect we must have for the awesome power of the atom. It's a story that demands to be told, not just for the victims, for the future. Because within the horror of Chernobyl lies a crucial lesson. The power to create can also destroy, and the echoes of that destruction can resonate for generations to come.